Hey, hey, look at me, look at me, I'm Nito, I'm a little ballerina. Hey everybody, it's Reckless. So, in this video, I will actually be going over the 2.0.2 and the 2.0.2.1 updates that Bungie actually released this week. So, I will be reading these off of the Bungie website and I will be explaining them as we go. However, if you would like to just go to the Bungie website yourself and then read it, be my guest, I will put a link in the description below. So, Let's get started. Now, in the update, it actually stated about, first thing was about the classes, and specifically the Night, uh, the night Stalker class for the Hunter. So in update 2.0.1.2, that hotfix, there was a little issue where Quiver actually was giving infinite uh, shadow shot. And if you know what I'm talking about, nine times out of 10, half of you actually exploited this sorry to hear but it was fixed quiver now gives you three shots as a perk was intended and i can definitely attest to that because i definitely been killed by it way too much during iron banner so the next thing we're actually going to talk about is activities and the first thing was during the warsack completion they was calculated incorrect time when a large number of guardians were present so they fixed that um, the next thing was when the tower actually featured Red Bull quest lines, it, they were giving it to non-eligible players, so they definitely corrected that. Now, as for the strikes, if you ever glitched into the map on the Fallen Saber strike, apparently you're not allowed to, well, you can't do it, not that you're not allowed to. Apparently that they said that they fixed it, so you can't do it. But I'm pretty sure somebody will exploit it and try to do it again. As for the King's Fall Raid, they fixed an issue where the daughters of Oryx, Death Scream volume, was too loud. Um, I don't, I don't see where it was too loud. It was perfectly fine, you know, I guess. Next, we have the quest in bounties. And Bungie fixed an issue where players, while joining the Paradox mission, would start an alternate encounter. I've never had this issue, so I've never experienced it, so I don't know what the issue actually was. They also fixed an issue where a Taken Trials quest step could be completed outside the Dreadnought. I've never done it, so again, I'm not too sure on what actually happened there. So the next thing we're actually going to go over is the Crucible, where Bungie actually fixed an issue that prevented the Mercy Rule from properly disabling players from joining in progress. Uh, the Warlock Radiance kills will now award 10 points to bring it in line with the other supers. However, these points stack on grenade, melee, and precision bonuses. Also, Radiance kills in the Crucible now include all kills during Radiance with both weapons and abilities. And this simplifies the song for the sun, Warlock specific Crucible bounty, and final step of the Master of Flame quest involving Radiance kills. An issue was also fixed where the Crucible Faction rank up package icon was incorrectly using the Vanguard icon. Drop rates for legendary items in normal Crucible have been also increased. Now we actually have another quest and bounties section for the 2.0.2 updates. And we'll start off with subclass quests no longer require the player to unlock them one subclass at a time. Quest and bounty steps that previously required wins now only require match completions. Bungie fixed an issue where the daily crucible bounty healthy balance was not properly completing on match completions. The featured matches weekly crucible bounty now awards plus three points per win and plus one points for completion. Progress is not lost on losers. Nah, I said losers, not losses. Haha. 
Next, the Daily Crucible Bounty Live Fire Exercise will now count top three finishes in Rumble as wins, which is pretty interesting. The Daily Crucible Bounty Cover Fire will now also complete when defeating an enemy player as the Spark Runner. Next, there has been some changes with the Crucible Forge quest chain that unlocks Shaq's weekly bounties. So, Crucible Forge Quest 1 has been unchanged. Crucible Forge Quest 2, players must deploy three relic probes in the salvage playlist instead of finishing captures. Crucible Forge Quest 3, unlocked on completion of Quest 1. Step 1, players must complete two matches in the daily playlist. Step 2, players must complete two matches in the weekly featured playlist, which still is Crucible. And step three, players must earn nine points. Wins in the daily or weekly featured playlist are worth three. Completions are worth one. So pretty much if you win three in a row, you'll get 12 points, which is enough to complete that step. So in order to unlock Crucible Forge Quest 4, it can be unlocked by completing quest one and two. Uh, players must earn four points. Wins and control are worth three and completions are worth one. So in the end, if you win one control match, you get all four points. And the same goes for Rift, Clash, Rumble, Skirmish, and Salvage. As for Crucible Forge Quest 5, it's also unlocked by completing Quest 1 and 2. Players must earn 9 points, elimination wins are worth 3, completions are worth 1. So again, you win 3 in a row, you'll get 12 points. Crucible Forge Quest 6, again, is unlocked for completing 1 and 2. The players must complete 8 matches with at least 1,200 points for a score, and no wins are required, which is not hard because you can still lose and get 1,200 points. Uh, Crucible Forge Quest 7, again, is unlocked by completing Quest 1 and 2. And steps no longer require wins. However, it does have steps of its own. And Step 1, the player must complete 4 matches with at least 6 auto rifle kills. Step 2, the player must complete 4 matches with at least 6 pulse rifle kills. Step 3, the player must complete 4 matches with at least six scout rifle kills and step four the player must complete four matches with at least six hand cannon kills as for crucible forged quest eight they still require completion of all other crucible forged quests to unlock this player must earn 20 points wins in any playlist are worth three uh match completions are worth one no regression on loss so, that means if you win 4 matches, you will get 20 points even. Now, Quest 8 still unlocks weekly Crucible Bounties account-wide on completion. And that can drop 300 plus light gear and exotics. So the next thing that's actually going on is the Iron Banner, which has increased drop rate for Legendary Gear in the Iron Banner playlist. And I can attest to this, I have got the chess piece so many times without the perks I want. Um, there have been increased Iron Banner reputation gains from games by 20%. Bungie has added a package at rank three and five that grants additional rewards to the player. So make sure once you hit rank three with the Crucible, I'm sorry, rank three with the Iron Banner, you head back up to Lord Saladin, grab your package, and then again at rank five. Now there are known issues. Some of the items from the rank five package will not be awarded when you open them until you return to orbit, which is actually kind of weird. However, we shall all regress because Bungie has added an Iron Banner Ghost Show that can also drop in the playlist at rank five. So it's not a guarantee but it can drop. Um, gear that buffs Iron Banner faction reputation gain now have corresponding perk descriptions and icons. 
They fixed an issue where tempered buff was not correctly appearing in the character screen, but apparently now it does. So the next thing we're actually going to talk about are the maps. And as for the maps, Bungie adjusted rumble landing positions on Frontier for better spacing. They moved heavy ammo crates on Asylum. They added Asylum to the skirmish playlist. They added invisible physics and kill volumes to prevent players from going out of bounds during the Burning Shrine, Frontier, and Vertigo, which is pretty interesting. They also fixed the text and the introduction to Widow's Court. I had no idea that there was something wrong with that. Now, as for items, our good old buddy Banshee44, who is the Gunmaster, has remembered... Whatever, it doesn't matter. He has freaking weapons parts now. Unfortunately, you only get five weapons parts for 250 Glimmer. Now, let's do a little math. If you maxed out on Glimmer, which is 25,000, and you get five parts of... I'm sorry, if you get five weapons parts each, that means you get 5,000 weapons parts for maxing out your entire Glimmer. Now, truthfully, I really think that they should have brought it down to 200 Glimmer instead of 250. Granted, I understand it's only, what's an extra 50? But 250 is a lot for just five weapons parts. And not a lot of people play all the time to be able to grind out all that Glimmer. That's a lot, that's definitely a lot of Glimmer. I I'm just saying. Our good old buddy, Lord Shax, now sells all three legendary swords to players who have completed the quest, Blade Master, to obtain one of the exotic swords. I, myself, luckily, I grinded out for all three exotic swords. And yeah, it's not like I need a legendary one, though. And they also fixed an issue where players could not accept a refurbished Arcadia ship from Amanda Holiday if they already had one in their vault. Not really too, you know, worried about that. But anyways, and for the last thing of the 2.0.2 update is the inventory. From which the Agonarch Rune can no longer be transferred to the vault or between characters to prevent a circumstance where the action would lock the player's other characters out of potential rewards. And now the charged Agonarch Runes can still be vaulted and transferred in between characters. They also fixed an issue where the Wolf's Grin emblem was not available from the collection station if the player had a full collection. And they also fixed an issue where the Laria Prima emblem would keep getting awarded to players upon entering orbit. Yeah. Well, well that issue for that is if you this if you got rid of that emblem the Laria Prima, once you hit orbit, it would give it back to you for no apparent reason. Constantly, if you keep deleting it. Don't know why, it just did. So that is all the updates for the 2.0.2 patch. And now we will start with the 2.0.2.1. So. As we start the 2.0.2.1 update, they only fixed a couple of things. Um, so first off, everything's in the tower. With the Crypt Art, they fixed an issue in which rare leg armor engrams were not decrypting correctly. And also, with that, what that means, or what did happen, is once you decrypt the leg armor, it would just disappear, and the only thing you would get would be reputation from the Crypt Arc and nothing else, which I had that issue a couple of times. Uh, Lord Saladin fixed an issue in which descriptions for Iron Banner shaders and emblems were displaying random perks incorrectly. And that's pretty much it for the 2.0.2.1 update that Bungie has did. So let me know what you guys think about the video in the comments below. This is Reckless. I will see you guys later and don't forget, you get hurt, hurt him back. You get killed, 
walk it off. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and enjoy the rest of the video. And if you did enjoy the rest of the video, let me know in the comments below. I will see you guys later. Victory doesn't win a war, but it's a good start. Good work.